Alright guys, got a special treat for you today. And tell you what it is. Dollar twenty-five gas. Look right here. Dollar twenty-five? Are you kidding me? Now I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not that old. I'm like thirty years old, right? I remember when gas was like ninety-five cent. I remember driving to the gas station on my go kart with my brother. We was breaking the law, but we went over and filled up the little. I mean, it literally would take like seventy-two cents to fill it up. Unbelievable. Dollar twenty-five. Times is tough, man. Times is tough out here. At least gas prices are down. That's all I can say. So here's why you. That's why y'all keep trash in your truck. That's why you keep trash in your truck right here. Staying away from the Roman. Meanwhile, guys, we're in route. I asked my cameraman. I actually did a poll yesterday. Y'all probably seen it. We're gonna catch big spotted bass, or we're gonna do a lake breakdown. Okay. So, I'm always catching big spots. I love it. I'm probably going to try to film that this afternoon. But what I wanted to do, I've never been to this place. And I'll show you where we're going here in a minute. I've never been to it. Never seen it. Don't know what it looks like. I have no clue. It's about 50 minutes from my house. An hour from my house. I've never been there. I don't even know if any big spots live there. I know largemouth live there. But... We're gonna go break it down. I think I think we're gonna do like a three-hour deal. Do like a three-hour deal and try to figure out what's going on in three hours and catch the biggest three or five fish limit I can or, or whatever. Just try to catch as many as I can. More or less, just figure it out. So y'all see y'all see where we're going here in a minute. All right, guys, here we are. As you can tell, this is a boat ramp that I have never been to before. I've never seen this lake. I've heard about it in the past. I've heard about it for 15 years or something. This is the middle pond in Alabama, okay? I don't even really know. I think it's Yates. I don't really know. I've never seen this place before. So what I want to do today is do a lake breakdown, okay? Now, that you've seen these you've seen these kind of videos before. You see them all the time. But, like, we're going to get really, really into depth. Like, I'm going to talk a lot okay today and i don't know what i'm going to catch i don't really know but every angler has a certain formula i guess you would say how they break down lakes i'm different than a lot of anglers it depends on your personality it depends on your fishing techniques it depends on your strengths your weaknesses you know um a finesse fisherman may see this clear water and say man i'm, I'm really going to go throw a shaky head i'm going to go and try to find some some lay down trees and you know catch some maybe some pre-spawn fish it, it all depends on techniques so keep that in mind but this is how i like breaking down a lake i do this everywhere i go whether i'm uh in alabama uh, on the coosa river uh, middle pond it doesn't really matter where i go i do the same exact deal and this is a lot of guys use this but um the number one thing that i do we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it the number one thing that i do when i pull up to a boat ramp well, first of all, I try to do some research, okay? On the way here, we were driving here, and uh, I just typed in on my map, you know, where we were going, and I just kind of looked at it, just a little tight little glance. I said, all right, it's pretty pretty straight and narrow. A few little pockets here and there. No big major creeks, um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at creeks. I'm looking at... Um, I'm trying to figure out if it's a, maybe it's it's a man-made lake or a, a river. So if there is there current flowing through it. So I just kind of look at a map and just got an idea of the place. I may I may see an area that has a certain type of vegetation, whether it's pads, weeds, or whatever. You could tell from an aerial map on this lake that there was shoreline grass. So as you can tell, like right back here, there's grass around the edges. So I pulled up, and the first thing that I do. This is the number one thing. When I back my boat in, I'm looking at water color, okay? That's gonna dictate how deep I'm gonna be fishing, okay? You hear that all the time. And dirty to some guys is, is one thing, and then dirty to some other. Like, for me, this water color, I mean, as you can tell, you know, I can, you know, drop my bait down and, and, and you can see it probably in about two foot visibility. I would say two foot. You know, that's the number one thing. I'm looking at water color and I'm looking, looking at water clarity. The second thing that I'm looking at is water temperature, okay? I'm trying to figure out water temperature. And the third, I'm looking at the time of year, you know, 
three three basic things that I'm looking at. Weather is one thing. I mean, it may be raining right now. Everything changes with weather. So the main three things that I'm looking at, to sum all that up, I'm looking at water clarity, I'm looking at water temp, and I'm looking at the time of year. So right now, we're here, it's April. All right, I think today is April the 8th or 7th, I'm not really sure. You can look around and tell. There's, there's pollen on the water, there's flowers are blooming. I, I'm immediately thinking shallow. Shallow, shallow, shallow. Fish are spawning, they're thinking about spawning, they might be postponed, it doesn't matter. It, when you're in this type of month, like March, April, especially in the south, fish are shallow. They're pre-spawn wanting to move up shallow, they're spawning up shallow, and when they postpone, they're garden. They're garden fry, okay? In the next few weeks, we're gonna have fry garters. And uh, and then after that, you know, top water is gonna be awesome, and then shad spawn. So, you know, we're here, it's later in the day, but I'm gonna sit out here, I'm gonna run around this lake and try to figure it out in three hours, okay? This, I, I, told, I told you guys, it's gonna be kinda tough to figure out a lake in three hours. This place isn't huge. I don't even know how long it is. But like, I'm gonna try to figure out a pattern on this lake. You know, I'm not necessarily trying to run around and catch one big one. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure fish are gonna be spawning here. It's just that time of year. I could just troll around and maybe find one big fish on bed. I don't know, bed fishing might be the deal. I'm not really sure. I wanna try to find a pattern, okay? Something I can run all the way around the lake. Whether it's a bait, whether it's a certain type of cover. I mean, as you can look behind me there, here you got grass that comes way out. All right, I'm gonna troll right over here near this, all right? Now that, and I do this majority of time when I'm back in my boat in. I mean, I did it at Lake Fork, okay? And like I said, guys, we're gonna get real inform informative here. If you're not able to fish right now because of the corona deal, I feel you. But if, you, if you're not able to fish, or even if you are, this video, I feel like it's gonna help you be a better angler. I really, really do. And uh, it's not, you know, I mean, I may not catch bass, but I, at least if I can show you guys how I like breaking down a lake. So I'm trolling down the bank here. I'm looking at water clarity. I'm looking at vegetation cover. Oh, look right here. See this? All right, I don't really know what that would be. That was that's some kind of coontail or millful. I don't know what, I, I think that's coontail. I'm not really sure. Looks like coontail, but. All right, so I see that. It, 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 it isn't just bank grass, kind of like Coosa River grass. So you got a little bit of that. You may find some mats of that. They might find some fish stacked in it or piled underneath it. A lot of wood. I see a lot of wood. So, you know, baits kind of like a spinnerbait or a square bill may play depending on the water color. Um, swimming a jig. Y'all all know Alabama swimming a jig is a huge deal. I'm sure I'll swim a jig someday. I mean, some today. And I'll probably troll around and look for some on bed. You know, that's my plan. I'm, I'm thinking shallow right off the bat. So let's get out here, try to catch some, try to figure out the deal. Now, when I say the deal, I know I'm talking a lot, guys, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to really, really dive into it. I mean, I feel like I call these nuggets, okay? You, you see all these guys on these videos. You see all these guys that make these videos and these lake breakdowns and all that. They give you some nuggets. They don't give you the full blown deal. So that's what we're gonna do today. Like I'm getting dial, I'm trying to dial you guys in. I'm, I'm trying to get dialed in myself. I always am trying to. So what my main goal today is, I'm gonna fish shallow. It's water clarity, time of year, there's grass. It's 73 degree water temp, shallow. What my main goal is today is to figure out whether they're in the very backs of the creeks or very backs of the pockets, toward the mouths of the pockets, and try to get a pattern going. So if I get a bite at the mouth of a pocket, I can run around and try to duplicate that. I, I see a lot of guys, they start at the mouth of a pocket and they go all the way around, and that's good. But if I can get a bite on this little outside patch going in, then I... I don't have to fish all that. I can just run that pattern. Bam, 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 and I'm more efficient. So, I don't know what time it is right now. We're about to start. What time is it? 125. All right, it's 125. Okay, guys? So, we're going to get out here, and we're going to go grind at it. I'm really about to get after it, for real. I'm going to try to figure this place out. Three hours. Lake breakdown. I got to tie on a couple crickets real quick. I brought me some cracking crawls. Brought me some of them. Brought me a big old bag of them. I'm probably gonna go swim a jig some. It's kind of cloudy today. I may go throw a frog. 
but I'm about to put one of them on my fun jig. We're gonna catch bigs. Somebody's gotta catch them. They're not gonna catch themselves. They're not gonna catch themselves. The guys, it may suck. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I may not get a bite. I'm telling you, this video's posting. I just spit all over myself. <laughs> this video is posting whether I get a bite or not. I may suck it up, who knows? It's called bass fishing. Not catching, which I hate. I hate. I hate just fishing. I'm gonna go catching, so that's what we're about to go do. I don't even have a map for this place. Look at this. For all y'all on here thinking, oh, he's been there before. He knows exactly where where to go. I don't. I don't know none of this. Y'all think I like? Look at all my waypoints. I've been to Lake Martin. We got Lake Martin. All right, here we go. All right, there's a. Uh, Alabama River. Here's Jordan. I think I've made a cast on Lake Jordan before. Uh, there's Lake Jordan. So I don't have any anywhere we're at right now. You can tell. I've never seen this place. You gotta get my little jack cut. Probably gonna tear the transmit. I mean tear tear the lower unit out of this thing, to be honest with y'all. I don't know, I ain't got no map on this place. Probably about to run right over a big old sandbar right here. Lake breakdown. We're doing it. I'm pretty All right, so I didn't go real far, as you can tell. I rode that right up here, not far. This time of year when it's spawning, I, when I'm really looking at somewhere to try to figure out, I like a pocket that has several different fingers in it, okay? I can figure out what kind of stays they're in, like whether, you know, if they're spawning in the very backs of them, you know, somewhere like that little pocket. Cut, 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 cut. You know, several of them. I mean, these little creeks and stuff, but I, I like stuff like this, because them fish love spawning in these little nooks, all right? And the more nooks you got in there, the more fish might be on bed. You get in a little straight pocket like that, you know, there might be one fish or two in there on bed, but I got more nooks I can go check. So, let's see what's up. All right, guys. So right now, I'm just looking around. A lot of bushes in the water. There are probably fish spawning around them. These fish love spawning around in bushes kind of untraditional, I guess you'd say, to be throwing a frog in the middle of the day. Something's telling me that I can catch a big one doing it. There's one swimming right there. A little small largemouth. A little baby. I can already tell y'all how I'm probably going to catch them. Just based off of what I see. Skipping a frog or pitching a bandito bug, you probably catch them on a lunker log right underneath these trees. I just wanted to go in this one pocket right here and just check him out and just see what kind of grass and what kind of trees is in here. It's probably not the best time for a frog, but something was just telling me chunk him in there. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do, guys. So I kind of got two options, I guess you'd say. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they're gonna be on bed around some of this stuff. So there's kind of two options you can do where you can put on a lunker log or just a worm. For me right now, I'm, you know, I'm throwing up a real shallow. I kind of want to skip this in there just to see if they're on bed. If they are, I'll know pretty quick. So you see how easy it is to skip? I can just skip that. And, you know, I can work him out. So that's just a worm, just weightless. But you can skip him real good. I think a lot of them are done spawning. Really, really do. I'm not seeing any jet out or anything. All right, I'm about to run to the juice. I'm about to run around and go check some stuff. We're going to catch them. 
hundred percent. You let me find a little area that's got them, that's going to be on. All right, let's roll. Probably gonna knock my daggum trolling motor off trying to get back in here. So, all right, this is something I look for, guys, which there may not be a bass in it, but see that little mat right there pushed up? That's isolated. You see bushes, 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 isolated piece. May not be nothing in it, but that, I mean, typically that's what you kind of stuff you wanna look for. You know, and if I had a bandito bug, I'd probably pitch in there and try to catch one, but anywhere that fish can just kind of hide, which they probably hiding underneath these bushes spawning right now, but I'm not pitching on them. Probably need to, but I ain't. So like for me, I don't think I'm ever that guy that just lands on the mother load, ever. Someone always pulls up just luck of the draw i guess you would say you might pull up in the right exact creek that's got them that right there looks good boys middle of the day with a frog Ooh. Whoa, whoa. so i'm gonna tell you all real quick it's middle of the day while i'm throwing a frog and the main reason i'm throwing this frog i feel like they're, they're probably on bed in their garden and you can typically get one to come up and just slap at it or something just to see if they're up there you know what i mean so just trying to figure out what stage they're in i guess you would say i think a lot of them are done probably probably still up there but they're just in that little recovery mode let's see he's up here a little ways these are pretty much done in these pockets. I would think you can catch them out a little ways on like shaky head and stuff. Yeah. But if you want to catch a big dodo head, yeah. you're probably going to have to be around some of this stuff like like, like this little bit of dinge, or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like some of this stuff. I'm thinking, so the water is fairly clear you know i think it's personally i think it's too clear to catch them real, real shallow unless they're on bed so what i'm trying to do is, is i you know i want to get away from these backs but that's where that little bit of dinge is I'm trying to hurry up and find some because it's y'all can hear it start to thunder back there i'm trying to get on something before it rains us out I still think that you can catch a big one. Yeah, I still think you can catch a big one up shallow in the backs of these places. Just up there either on bed or just where they live, you know. That's what I'm talking about right there. Boom. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. All right, so that's my first good bite. So I got away from that den for a minute and I was trying to go back out. But here's here's the thing. This place, I'm gonna let this fish go real quick. Look at that. Choked it. Oh my gosh. Crack and crawl, ding. All right, on the crack and crawl, look at that. Post spawn, exactly what I was thinking. Remember a while ago, I was sitting there talking about, oh, I think these fish are done, I think they're spawned out. Skinny as a rail, post spawn. She's up our garden, right there. Four pounder. How about that? First good bite. 
pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Look at that. So now, so now that kind of clues me in. I don't have long, I don't have a lot of time. So I'm always, I'm trying to cover water. I, me personally, my, you know, my, my kind of fishing, my style is covering water, trying to get a bite or two and then slowing down. Dang, that fish got me wired up, boys. So the main reason that I'm gonna slow down and kind of talk about that bite was I, I I very seldom ever think a bite is a fluke. Okay, there are some bites that are just a fluke. You may just go down a bank and he's not on anything, but that bite was not a fluke. So majority of this lake is clear. All right, so Lake Martin feeds it. Lake Martin super clear, so the main is really really clear. So, but these little backwaters, these little small cuts, if you look back there, there's probably a little run in and they they got a little dinge, just a tint dingier, okay? I think majority of these largemouth, they love dingy water, they love being up shallow, and that allows them to stay where they want to be at, that little bit of dinge. So, that fish was not on the bank. He was in a little sparse, a little bitty mat. Look right there. Little bitty mat, see that? It was right there in the middle. So I'm thinking that a lot of these fish are kind of wanting to come out, but you know they're not necessarily done completely. That fish might have been spawning. I highly doubt it. She was up there probably guarding fry. But uh, you know, as you can tell, we're in five feet right here. That little bitty clump is right before it shallows up. So what we're gonna do now is run the very backs try to find some clumps in the middle, these very back dingy pockets. You know, I haven't fished a lot of them, but I, that, this is really the first one that I fished that had that kind of stuff in it. So, keep doing that, I'm trying to figure it out. All right, guys, so this is the next pocket up. I don't really see a lot of grass in it. You know, and you don't, like I said, this is all dependent on your, this is all dependent on your strengths. You know, I mean, for, for you or for someone else, they may be comfortable throwing shaky heads. You know what I'm saying? But th this time of year for me, I'm going shallow. I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna try to catch these big large mouth. I think there's spotted bass in here. And if anybody knows me, I love catching spots. But I just, I'm going after big large mouth that are up shallow garden trying to eat like there's a little clump right there i don't know if there's anything in it but it looks good looks like a big dodo be laid up right there did you hear that <laughs> sound like one i don't know what it was Gobble on a ding. Daddy! <laughs> Dang, that right there kind of got me fired up. Look, guy. Look, guy. Look at him red eyes. He's spawning. See that? Cracking. Boys, we got we got a gobbler back here gobbling his head off. He's gobbling everything. Woo! Good grief. <laughs> Gotta cut a little bit short. As you can tell, we got a thunderhead coming up. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna make this short and sweet. 
little late breakdown for you. I think the biggest thing that you got to keep in mind that I, that I, they're still gobbling. Oh, it's about to get bad. I think the biggest thing that I, that, that, that I would say advice wise is just to see if they're far and back or, or up close. So, you know, I caught that one good fish. We're going to cut it kind of early, but, uh, you know, pay attention to your bites. Pay attention to where you get a bite at and make a pattern of it. And I really think I could run around, if it wasn't about to storm, I could run around and really catch a big bag because I just had them bites and it's about to fire and we gotta we, we got get up out of here. I just had those bites. All right, so I just had those bites just a while ago. I just caught another small one. But I feel like they're they're guarding. They're in the back of these pockets. I, I really feel like if I fish a tournament here tomorrow, I could run through the backs, fish that little bit of dens because all this is real clear. Swim a jig, you know, maybe flip a bandito bug around, catch them on a little slim shake worm or a frog. I really wish I could stay, but as you can tell, it's about to go down. So I appreciate y'all following along. All right, guys, we just got back here at the house and it come a daggum turf floater. Like, flooded. You can see my boat out there. I would be in my boat right now, but my boat deck is soaking wet. I understand there's not a bunch of big fish in this video, but what I wanted to do today is really show y'all, I guess you would say reality. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. You don't normally catch them just showing up and catching them. These guys that I fish against, you know, myself included, it ain't ever easy to be honest i remember when there wasn't a ton of people they knew everything like okay so perfect example swimming a jig um that is that didn't used to be like a staple you know what i'm saying so like that that was kind of fairly a sneaky kind of deal especially around the coos river that's where it kind of originated from but you know now there's a lot of people doing that it's kind of hard to differentiate yourself so for me, breaking down these lakes like this, it, there isn't like a set formula. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I kept saying, check your water temperature, check your water color and the time of year. That's just the beginning of basically your day. Okay, that'll just get you started. Definitely take those three into account, right? Take those three into account. But today, like while I was on the water, and I keep in mind, I wasn't out there but maybe two hours and 15 minutes. I mean, I wasn't out there long until that storm kicked up. So. But I could, I could tell and I could get a feeling of what the lake was doing just by basically running toward the back of the pockets first. Because it's this time of year, I figure they might be spawning, right? So I run to the back of the pockets first, get around a little dinge. Well, I wasn't around much grass. So what I think's happening was, was those fish were fry garden, but they were near grass, okay? And you know, you see me all the time swimming the jig. That's just one of my favorite things to do. I love swimming the jig. When I'm breaking a lake down, I'm trying to cover water, okay? I'm trying to cover water. I'm not dragging around, you know? I wanna try to get active fish biting. That way I can get a pattern going. I'm always moving. I'm always just covering water. So, and that may not be the best thing to do right now, but for me, that's what I like doing. 3 8 ounce swim jig, crack and crawl. That's the Okeechobee crawl looking color. Um, you know, I cover a lot of water with a swim jig. That's one of my main choices when I'm trying to fish shallow, any kind of cover, wood, you can swim around wood, anything. I mean, it's imitating a brim. So, swim jig, and uh, I threw a frog around a little bit, had one or two little bites on the frog. I didn't really get to throw it a lot. Now, keep in mind, it was toward the middle of the day, and uh, this is just a snag-proof frog. You know, I, I really like that orange-looking looking color. You know, it, it kind of imitates a brim, kind of on top, and they do not like a brim up there. The main objective of this video, it wasn't to go out there and just catch 35 pounds on a swim jig. I mean, I could go to a farm pond and do that, but it was to really dive into the mindset of what guys try to do. If you're watching this to learn, I, what I want you to realize and see is what separates Jacob Wheeler from from myself or Jacob Wither from who or myself from a local angler or Kevin Van Dam, it doesn't matter. I, I really think what separates fishermen, okay, is personalities, okay? Your personalities 
you know, people change. Like so, some guys, they love finesse fishing. I mean, my man behind the camera right now, his rods are sitting right there, and he's got several different things on there that I don't hardly throw, but he's got confidence in them. So you get confidence in certain baits. For me, I got confidence in a swim jig. I got confidence in a frog. It's where I grew up at, okay? So I'm not saying swimming a jig in the back of them pockets was the best thing on that lake going right then, but I'd only been there two hours, and that's what I found, and I caught a four-pounder doing it. And it was sunny and you know that storm came in but like if I'm going out there and I'm practicing and I get a four pound bite at 2 p.m. when the sun's out what what's gonna happen at daylight you can't ever tell there may be a shad spawn in the very back of them places and then big ones are biting you know so that was just a clue so my main advice for you to do when you're trying to figure out a body of water if it's a big body of water what we like doing is breaking down sections of the lake. Find you a section of the lake that fits your style of fishing, okay? For me, the backs and pockets, finding any kind of grass was my style of fishing. Take into account the water color, the water temperature, the time of year. Uh, today it was stained, I guess, a little bit, not much. It was actually too clear for what I like doing. So that's why you see me pick up the slim shape worm, stuff like that, a little bit lighter line. So you change up your techniques based off the water color, all right? Huge, huge deal in bass fishing, water color. You know, I used to be stubborn. I used to just go swimming jig in clear water. It didn't really matter. It can be just a simple bait change that would change your whole deal. Mechanically wise, it's hard to separate yourself as a fisherman. I mean, I've been in the boat with high school guys that can cast damn near better than me. They can skip a, a jig underneath a dock just as good as anybody else. I mean, I promise you, I've seen them where they just right underneath the dock. So, Mechanically wise, it's hard to outfish people. So it's right here, okay? So keep that in mind. So right here, it's a thinking game. It's, it's when I say, I call it getting dialed in. It's clues. You're trying to put a piece of a puzzle together. So that bite I had in the back of that pocket, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I'm taking into account everything with the bite, everything. All right, was there a little bit of wind on it? Was there, did I see fry jumping before he bit it? Or there, is it, was he a fry garter? Uh, was he on just a little bit of clump of gla uh, grass? Was he in the shade? You know what I mean? So you put these little puzzles together and then you can go across the lake and run across and say, all right, that, that fits it. And there's no better feeling. I mean, I get this feeling whenever I'm idling around. Now this is strictly shallow fishing, but when you idle around and you see a group of fish and you turn around and catch them, oh my gosh, I love that. But like you, take all those little pieces and put them together and then you run across the lake and you see something really similar and then you pull up and you catch a five pounder doing the same thing, you crack the code. That is the goal, especially for professional fishermen or even local guys that fish local tournaments. I challenge you, the next time you go fishing or you go to a different lake, try to crack the code. Pay attention to every bite you get and, and, and step outside the box a little bit. I, I find myself all the time going up to my home lakes and doing the same exact thing. You know, with all this stuff that's kind of going on right now, I've, I, we haven't been traveling a lot. I've went to my home lakes and fished places that I've never fished. Just trying to learn. You can never stop learning, okay? When you go to these new lakes and you're, you don't know where to start at, I would say pick your strength and uh, find somewhere that can work for you, okay? So if fishing shallow is your strength, find you some dingy water. You know what I mean? That that can really, really help. I, I didn't really find that today, but I had a few bites. Water color, water temperature, time of year. So keep in mind, fish are going to spawn right now. I thought that shallow was going to probably be the deal, and, it, and it, I th really think it is. If I had a tournament tomorrow there, without a doubt, I could do that all day, and I'd probably get five swim jig bites, and they'd probably be big ones. So um, anyway, guys, it was fun. Like I said, sorry there wasn't a ton of catches on there. We got blowed out by a daggum turd floater. So anyway, um, I, I really, really enjoy doing videos like this. The, I try to get as formative as I can. I'm trying to you know, dial you guys in and, and give away some of those nuggets that, that a lot of guys are not kind of giving out. So if you watch the video completely, I appreciate you. Anyway, I enjoyed it, guys. Appreciate y'all following the channel. I think tomorrow, which is Thursday, we're gonna go catch some big spotted bass. I, I'm, I'm pretty positive. Like, I got rained out today. Didn't really get to go catch as many as I wanted to. 
So big spots is on the menu tomorrow if the weather is permitting. And I ain't talking about no big spots. I'm talking about biggins, like fives. So appreciate y'all following the channel. Until next time.